Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, Software Engineer K here, and today we've got some pretty awesome news to go through. Uh, we did a video yesterday with regards to the NFT drop leak, specifically the Ecto-1 and Ghostbusters Day. So I just wanted to touch a little bit on that, um, along with um, another update that we got regards to a video that I did beforehand, um, where I was discussing Ecomi's upcoming updates, and Ecomi left a comment on the video, so I just wanted to touch on that and my thoughts. And I did also want to touch a little bit with regards to what's happening overall in the crypto markets as well, and where we're moving with OMI. So, firstly, there was this video um, which I did, which was Ecom's up upcoming updates. So, this was just the various different updates that we have to look forward to. Um, and Ecomi, they commented and said they can confirm that the VV verse is not the digital project, uh, not the digital product that they've alluded to. So, in that video, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. I discussed that Ecomi has said that they will be getting some kind of new digital product, which uses Omi as well. And they said that it's not VVverse because I assumed it was VVverse since the only other product that they have trademarked outside of VV is the VVverse. So this is a brand new product. And so that essentially, you know, is a call for the speculation games to begin. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it could be. They have had, you know, other products with, un, within that Ecomi umbrella. But those products, you know, they were either, you know, discontinued for various different reasons or we just didn't really hear much of them. Um, one of those products um, that I discussed um, earlier last week was the Ecomi One um, product. So it's kind of like a cryptocurrency debit card. Um, and this, to be honest, is where I believe we are going to be going because this is kind of the industry that I work in as well. I work in... Um, credit remittance um specifically um credit cards for brands such as amazon and having kind of blockchain based um payments on the back end that is where i believe we are going to be going so we're going to have an option between the two um uh, between your traditional banking as well as the uh, blockchain based uh, payments using cryptocurrencies and they had this ecomi one card and I think it's pretty cool, but I didn't hear much more about this. And there are obviously loads of regulatory issues if you want to do do any kind of product product related to payments. So I'm not sure what happened. I did hear that apparently it was possibly discontinued, but I will need exact confirmation from someone within the team. Um, but again, the whole kind of prototype and everything did look pretty cool. So. Yeah, that's pretty much an open game for you guys to start speculating on what this product could be. I am not sure what it could be. So Dave, you did also post that today is Ghostbusters Day and he left this comment on here. So apparently we are supposed to be getting a drop and I believe it could be either the Slimer Ecto-1 or the Ghost Trap or maybe all three uh, or a combination of the three. My prediction is based off what I've seen so far, it could be the Slimer, and I'll tell you guys why in a second. But he did leave this comment here. I actually don't have a time. We are waiting for a final call. Please don't think I'm trolling. Um, now, I do want to address this comment. So this was posted 13 hours ago. And, you know, David, you, like I've said before, he's an awesome guy. He's a really, really cool CEO. Like, I don't know any CEOs that spend this much time engaging with the community. Um, that being said, he does suffer from what I've noticed a lot of people on the more business face, like consumer facing side uh, suffer from, which is kind of a, I guess, disconnecting communication between themselves and, you know, the people that work in the background on like the actual application itself. Um, because, you know, David, you may have some cool ideas. Uh, someone else, you know, on the business facing side may have some cool ideas. They'll spec it up, you know, these, this is what they want. And then the people on the more production based side, they'll kind of estimate this, uh, feature. They'll, you know, decide how to build it out and they'll obviously leave, you know, time for uncertainties as well. And usually people on the business side, they may, you know, think it's not a big feature. It's not that difficult to release to deliver and they may actually make promises on the date and time of delivery without actually having consulted you know the people who are actually working on the production in the background i'm not saying that this is something that david Yu has done but it is quite a common occurrence across all companies not just ecomi and the way to kind of combat that is for people on the business side to be more involved in understanding the processes that you know go on in the back end and 
also to get involved in the estimation process as well, um, as well as the kind of um, feature user story feature requirements as well, because when they're involved in that conversation, they can say exactly what it is that they want. They can see, you know, in person what the kind of response, what the product they're delivering, the feature delivering, what it will look like in the end. Just because what tends to happen is someone will ask for a feature and someone who's working on the development of it, they'll look at it and be like, there's not enough information, they'll send it back and then they'll get some more information and then they'll probably send it back because um, you know they need even more information. And then when they've done it, the person who requested it says it doesn't look quite right like what they wanted it to look like and then they have to redo it. It just goes back and forth and they can actually you know reduce all of this uh, ping ponging of you know this feature by spending enough time you know getting involved in the process understanding it and even if they can't do that i would say the best thing to do is kind of do what dan crovers does and you know don't don't speak in you know in definitives don't say we will have it by this day or we will have it here um just say you know there's a greater than likely chance greater than average chance that we'll have it for this day and that's the day we're going to aim for um, but there may be delays along the way that we haven't accounted for like uh, I think that's just a better way of phrasing things but again it's kind of like an iterative process it's something that they'll get better at over time people just need to remember that at the end of the day there's no ill intention behind what David Yu is saying it's just he's a a collector who's very enthusiastic about the products he wants to share his enthusiasm with everyone else you know he loves sharing these uh kind of bits of news but at the same time he should um, exercise some kind of uh, caution with how he phrases things because people do take it the wrong way um but you know i i, I know this already because I, I kind of work in this industry so um to me it's just like you know hey there's just another delay some something probably went wrong um we'll get it eventually it doesn't matter um, but on the point of which drop I think is coming, um, I believe it is the Slimer, um, specifically because if you have a look at this picture here, now, previously Slimer's price was $19.99, so 20 gems. If you have a look in your app now, the price has actually been updated. It's no longer 20 gems, now it's 30 gems. So I believe they've updated the price to accommodate for, you know, the, how many users there are now, just to bring it in line with um, that. And the number of mints hasn't changed from what I've seen. So it's just the price. So I think because they've kind of amended this, I think this might be the drop that they're looking forward to dropping. But again, we did also have the teaser of the Ecto-1, so it could be that as well. Um, and we've already seen the Ghost Trap teaser on David Yu's Instagram. So who knows, we could actually get all free. So that would be pretty cool. Um, now, with regards to the crypto market, so um, we did have you know another public speaker who has kind of um i guess been spreading a bit of fud with bitcoin and yeah it, it's just goes to show that a lot of what's affecting bitcoin is just people people's opinions that have been you know broadcasted and those who you know tr are fairly new to crypto who are very easy manipulated by others they'll probably sell um for those who have been around for a while you've probably experienced you know people like john mcafee who used to pump and dump like every day um so you're probably a bit more immune to that but yeah it's just something to just take into consideration as well um now on that point of only price uh what i did want to touch on is daily price so um on the four hourly chart we can see that we did uh, bounce off this trend line here and we are now approaching this point of resistance and i believe we are due another drop, but you know we have just been continuing on this downtrend, and I believe we will continue to do so. Um, maybe give it a few more days. Whenever we get a little bit of you know good news, a new exchange, I believe that will cause us to break out. But until then, I believe we will just continue to go down, um, probably below this trend line as well. Uh, if we just go to the hourly chart, yeah, pretty much same. So we have been seeing a bit more green, you know, past four hours we've been closing in the green, which is good. And I, but I believe we will hit this point of resistance and then come back down. And I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Like I said, I'm not fussed about the price going downwards. But what is nice to see is, you know, at least we did touch this trend line and we rebounded. So that just confirms that, you know, other people are bullish on OMI and they've, you know, going below this trend line, they probably thought it was a bit oversold and we had some pending, we must have had some pending buys. So they bought back in. 
but yeah i am looking to buy a little bit more omi in, within this week and then i'll have one more big buy towards the end of the month and that's pretty much all i'll be able to buy until san diego comic-con so hopefully we do get a bit of you know good news there as well with the comic-con exclusive drops but yeah, that's pretty much everything i had to go through you guys today uh as always please do like and subscribe to support the content and i'll keep you guys updated with anything else i find out and i'll see you guys in the next video see ya